and welcome to the Raw Preview. I'm Adam Wilborn from What Culture, joined by all the dolly boys, Michael Hamlet from What Culture. Here's a look ahead to tonight's episode of Raw. But before we get into it, if you're a fan of this sort of thing, make sure you subscribe to What Culture Wrestling on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Amazon Music, and YouTube, uh, where we do daily wrestling podcasts where we not only review Raw, but also SmackDown, the show formerly known as NXT 2.0. Oh, AW Dynamite, AW Collision, pay-per-views, premium live events. We have interviews, roundtable discussions, and a roundup that we complete with a bloody good quiz, of course, on WrestleCulture. As I said, they're joined by Hamlet to look ahead to Raw tonight and all the fallouts from Bad Blood. Yeah, um, for those that want our extended Bad Blood thoughts, this feels like as opportune time as any to preview the video and audio podcast that will be coming, Yep, as will we, when we talk about that show. <laughs> uh, look... Raw's two hours tonight, so we'll try and get this preview wrapped in under three. Yes. Fair deal? Fair. Yeah? Um, they have absolutely stacked it. This is 100%. Two hours are back. Well, it's just treat, treat, treats. No vegetables. Uh, nothing. Well, there might be a few potatoes thrown, but like nothing but the good <laughs> stuff other than that. Um, coming in hot for this brief period of two hours till January. Yeah. And it goes back to three. As we've talked about at length, it is sad slash funny, depending on where you sit on the side of the divide, that WWE took... Uh, 11, 12 years to crack the three-hour formula, did it and lost an hour. <laughs> very fed, very fed. But uh, as a result, it feels like this one at least surely will be all killer, no filler. Yes. There's not a lot of time to kill as opposed to normally, and there's not a lot of stories that at the moment feel like filler. Exactly. Two big championship matches, a fun gimmick match to look forward to, but obviously we have to start by talking about the fallout from bad blood. Sorry, yes, God forbid. <laughs> How dare I not consider your bullet points that were written on the 1st of January of this year. Indeed. Um, and well, let's talk about one man, CM Punk. Go on then. I feel like he might be off this show. Yeah. Because it feels like, particularly this time of year, considering where they're heading next, mm. it may just be the time of selling the injury, selling the impact of this epic rivalry, one of the greatest trilogies of all time, um, and the incredibly satisfying conclusion in Hell in a Cell. Yes. Um, look, this is not an opportunity for myself or anyone like myself to take a victory lap no. on the haters. That's a bad blood review. <laughs> However... Um, CM Punk is the best in the world as a pro wrestler, less so as a human being. And I think it's important to uh, classify where our parasocial relationships with the punk have come to an end. And I fully believe that he will one day work yes. one of these Saudi shows and he will, uh, it'll be the latest thing that he will be correctly, in some cases, called a hypocrite for. Uh, and it'll be one of the worst things that he'll be called a hypocrite for, actually. That day will come, but it does make me wonder if for now at least he will try and keep that specific wolf away from the door. Um, him and Drew could justifiably like sell the scars of war. We mm -hmm. saw Drew very literally doing that in the form of his head being glued shut and 18 stitches being inserted and him yeah, being entitled to a swear word or two yeah. was taking place. They did the you ever had your head glued shut? No, funnily enough, no. I have. Have you? Yeah. Have you? Yeah. When? How? Back when I was uh, in the theatre... Uh, I uh, worked a, a stiff uh, weapons... No, uh, I was helping put together some set when I was right. on the crew for the shout out to the Pomegranate Theatre in Chesterfield. Mm -hmm. uh, and being six foot three... Adam and the Giant Pomegranate. I was, I was tasked with holding up... Uh, Girdis is the wrong word, but it's the only one I can think of right now. Two struts or whatever. Yeah. Holding them in place above me as they were sort of connected through whatever. Uh -huh. And there was a bloke above me like doing it and I'm holding one bit up and he accidentally just dropped a bit and it landed. It wasn't that heavy. Yeah. So it landed on my head and uh, I've just no sold it, obviously. Um, <laughs> and so I'm still there and he's like, you're all right? I'm like, yeah, yeah, I'm fine. I'm fine. Just get it sorted sort of thing. And whoever the the stage manager or whatever was was like, oh Adam, I'll I'll just take that off you. I'm like, no no, it's all right, it's fine. Um, ch I'll check afterwards. Uh, uh, just get it fixed. And he went, no no no, S so and so, you step in. And they did. And I was like, what well, you did? I'm fine. I'm not. It's, I'm not even got like my head doesn't even hurt that yeah, much. Yeah. He's like, no no no, you need to go and look in the mirror. And uh, it, it opened up a gash on the old top of my head, and the blood had started going down the oh. back, and it was started to like um, I was getting drenched on the back of my t-shirt with like blood. Richard Belzer when Hulk Hogan picks him up, and you can just see the back of his like exactly. Ah, oh, I didn't know that. And uh, yeah, I had to go to the hospital, and it wasn't thankfully it wasn't stitches or uh, staples as Drew has had to have. Yeah. They literally, as far as I remember, just went, 
oh, yeah, that looks like it's going to need to be stuck together. Oh, what technical procedure are you going to use, Doc? <laughs> and just held my head together and went, right, don't wash your head for about 10 days and that should fix it. Oh, my God. Sabu did that to his arms in that bar by my yeah. time. Crazy glue. Um, which I suppose is what uh, you got given. Whoa, crazy glue. <laughs> I suppose if my head... Got cut open. As long as it happened on one of the four corners, there's already a joint in place. It's just like, you know, like, what is it called? Tongue and groove, where yeah, it just slides yeah. back in. Oh, that was easily fixed. Yeah. Um, yeah, God. I don't think Drew's going to be back for quite some You're time. You're hard now. as f- Thank you. I didn't know that. I, 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 think it was, I think it was one of those ones where, a bit like you see sometimes in wrestling, where it's like a really innocuous cut, but it bleeds more than if they'd, you know, sliced oh, their so arm you, off. It, so you were, it was a blade job, effectively. You were working. You oh, wanted yeah, to make yeah. it look impressive. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, so that they would see, oh, yeah, um... That uh, ruggedly handsome hit stagehand probably needs a part on stage. You can go. Yeah, that's it. You were trying to get booked. I don't much remember. This is before or after. Uh, during the curtain call for the panto, I just stuck the cow's head on and stuck my head out the sides. Hang on. Right. Wait a minute. So in one podcast, you're telling us that you bled for the business. Indeed. And you took part in an uh, unauthorized curtain call. Exactly. Like the game Triple H. And then you were buried in the business as a result. And that's moving to radio. I just had to. I had to Makes yeah. me sick to my stomach, Jay. You are. <laughs> I had to get out of there. That's, what a revelation. Well, Punk and Drew needs to get back to work then if uh, Adam Wilborn could get straight back on the stage. Yeah, I think Drew's going to be off for quite some time. It's understandable that A, he would sell it, and B, he's going to be a bit sad because he lost this epic rivalry that's been going on 10 sodding months. Said this in the build-up to Bad Blood. Um, the programmers were already on the Raw side especially. And if anything... Um, because of that, Raw was more exhilarating for the stuff that wasn't happening mm-hmm. as the PLE as was. Um and I look forward to delving deeper into that in this preview, which we're plugging relentlessly here, in this review, excuse me. And with Punk and Drew, it was arguably done one full PLE ago, mm-hmm. and they made this matter again, and they made the match as magic as it was. So the most fascinating thing now, like last time after the strap match, Punk was out the next night to say, right, moving on, excited for what's exactly. next. And exactly, it turned yeah. out that was a vehicle to get us to hell in a cell. So presumably, if he was to return tonight, and I don't think he will, the return promo will very much be a, well, I'm old, I'm tired, I'm sick of working with children, <laughs> uh, but I'm ready to go. And it'll be the setup for the next thing. Like, uh, Dominic Mysterio was a fun house show thing that feels like it's going to one day make it onto television. Liv or Morgan's or SummerSlam. Oh, my God. SummerSlam in Joyzy with uh, AJ Lee and Liv Morgan oh, both please. talking that one up. But there was rumours of Punk and Bron Breaker. Has that been changed with Bron Breaker's mm-hmm. potential babyface turn? Punk and Gunther could be sooner rather than later, you know. Like, if they want, as per the last reports, and things can change and will do a million times, the WrestleMania whiteboard had Punk and Seth on it. That would suggest that Punk and Gunther is going to happen before. Yeah. The title being on the line. Um, Punk as a rumble contender, possibly to excuse him not being in the match itself. There are a lot of different ways to get to a lot of different opponents on the magical white hot over character factory that is Monday Night Raw right now. <laughs> There's no real bad punk match. I did. I'll retweet this every now and then just for my own back slapping. But when punk was even rumoured to be returned to WWE, I was just so buzzed. Like, it's the first, what, 11 or 12 punk dream matches that came to me. I just tweeted them all in capitals over excited. Drew wasn't in the list. No. And that's pretty much all he's done for 10 months. So the entire list remains in place for Punk to get to. Most of them, if not out-and-out dream matches, are a version of fantasy booking because you simply wouldn't have imagined ever getting to see it. Yeah. So that includes things like tag matches with his best mate, Jey Uso, for example. Yeah. Um, The prospect of working with and against Cody Rhodes as War Games approaches, which would in turn fold Punk into the bloodline, that of which is currently taking place on Raw in the form of Jey and Sammy, ostensibly a million miles away from it, while now Roman and Jimmy are back friends on SmackDown. I don't think you can go wrong with CM Punk now that he hasn't got a rival. That that was what was so cool about the Rumble. He was obviously going to be building to something within the match with Cody. He was obviously going to be potentially setting something up with Seth. But that SmackDown where he had face-off with countless guys, that's where we're now at. We're back to that point where everyone in that locker room probably wants the match with Punk as much as we want to see it. If if they decide to do that and do, yeah, do do Punk, uh, Seth, for the World Heavyweight Championship at WrestleMania, anyone you can think of for Gunther to face at, at Mania? I don't know, maybe a Legends match or something? What are we talking about from Bad Blood? Mm-hmm. Well, uh, I want to watch it. I do too. I want to see if Gunther... Oh, I want to see Gunther, Gunther beat the crap out of Gage as well. <laughs> yeah, that would be pretty good, wouldn't it? Gage, oh, he'd have it a lot more of a job than he would have done a few years back. Young Gage... 
had no problem once upon a time whipping the old shirt off. Yeah. But if he does that and now he's like this jacked, like 20 year old dude, and then Gunther just chops him down the side straight away. I want to see if like they can measure the pace of Goldberg's spear so that Gunther can stop it with a chop. Oh, like, think that old man. I'm not scared of that anymore. And then he builds up to it and he gets him later on. I don't know. Um, I think that was some uh, pretty it's gonna be a bad time to be Ludwig Kaiser as well. Yeah, sorry, Ludwig Kaiser. Hey man, Punk and Kaiser is a run up to the Gunther match. It's a good idea. Punk wrestling on Raw. Oh, this is what I was going to say. Yeah, I I agree. Not tonight, I, I don't think he's working Crown Jewel, but I think he may well actually appear on this show. Just as I say it, because you can have him come out, obviously sell the effects, be like, "What a bloody war that is!" But now. I'm back. I've won it. My focus, as I said before, is now getting back after that World Heavyweight Championship. Not right now. Best luck to Sammy tonight, et cetera, et cetera. But long term, that's where I'm heading. And then he walks backstage, crossing paths as he does with someone who returned last week, Seth Rollins. Bloody forceful with it. I don't like. <laughs> I can't look at you when you're doing that. But yeah, like you say, an interim sort of thing of he's not going to work the Saudi shows this year, I would assume. So yeah, let's have him work some sort of rivalry on on Raw that just not not I say not necessarily launch this week, but distracts him until January. Let's well, say. Look, I think this is far than uh, if we talk about like serious stories. Um, this is far than a daft one for Punk. But why don't we play the game? Ooh. And look at what Triple H does. Because, no, no, not even that game. What did Triple H do last week? He brought Brom Breaker into Gunther's field of vision. Yes. Did he not? With the idea being that, yes, I was a bit arrogant in my Intercontinental title loss. And I want to get that back. But uh, the fans have kind of embraced me. And maybe I need to be looking at the world title as well. So you catch it down the road, Gunther. Not for now, but for later, definitely. They kind of showed you something there. If Punk was to do that and call his shot with Gunther, does that not bring Punk and Brom Breaker into each other's orbit? In Potentially. That, in that way that executive producer Paul Levesque enjoys, uh, where there suddenly becomes like a little beef that didn't that didn't exist seven days ago, but now they have one. They both want Gunther, they both want the title, and they both want it now, and neither of them particularly wants to wait too long. Yeah. So they I, have to fight each other. I so, I like to call it, it's my sort of term that I coin myself, a narrative ecosystem that they've got in WWE. You love that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, I also like the idea of Gunther. Like you'd say, you re, refocus. This is just long-term we're talking now. Well, we can't. It's WWE, you can trust the process. Um, refocusing. It's not like book it week to week. I, uh, <laughs> I want to I win the World Heavyweight Championship. Let's say Gunther, not to spoil what we think is coming later, but let's say Gunther beats Sami Zayn and Braun wants his shot and Punk wants his shot, but Punk's obviously the star and Punk's like, I want to fight you for that. And he goes, sorry, do you see what Sami had to go through to get yeah. to me? Braun Breaker went on this amazing run. Yes, he lost one match, but look at the run he went on. How many matches have you won since you came back? And you have to set that thing out of, right, Punk's just got to work almost every week on Raw to get his wins up, because wins and losses actually matter in this company, to get that title shot. Can we fold this into the preview of Sammy and Gunther? Go on. Right. Also, I want to circle back and uh, have uh, CM Punk face a legend, because um, that's clearly That's fine, I'll circle right back now. and talk about CM Punk all goddamn day. But <laughs> on to Sammy and Gunther, right? Because that is quite a nice segue to this match. Mm -hmm. And as you say, the kind of what's likely to happen um, with Gunther's title picture, and like if we're heading into WrestleMania season, and the belt still with Gunther rather than in that Seth and Punk match, and who knows how the Rumble's going to play out. It's the first two-hour Raw tonight, which they will make an event of, mm -hmm. even though it's a short-term thing. Triple H has just unveiled that hideous sports-washing monstrosity. Mm. Survivor Series pilled. Here, Saudi Arabia have this frozen piss trophy, but in a belt. <laughs> That's what it is. <laughs> yeah, it's the exactly. Braun thing. It's a, yeah, yeah, nah. Um... Well, the greatest room but was quite nice, actually. So let's not throw it all away. Saudi Arabian investment in sports disgusts me. And I would never endorse it in any sporting endeavour. Uh, the belt is hideous. And it's almost hideous by design and by distraction in order to um, get people forgetting about what these Saudi shows are. It's just mm. the latest one. Um, is it possible, considering... How enormous he is over there. You think what I'm thinking. Mm -hmm. Sammy Zayn defeats Gunther tonight 
for the World Heavyweight title to give you Sammy versus Cody rather than giving away Gunther versus Cody in a meaningless match. Sammy and Cody have fought and been on the same side before as related to the Bloodline, right as we're in Survivor Series season. Sammy yet again gets the win over Gunther as a way to say, I've done it again, mate. You can beat everyone, but you can't beat me. And then coming out of Crown Jewel, Gunther wins it back. I like that as an idea, but I just don't see it in terms of... Because you. Because I wouldn't have... You can't have Cody versus Sammy in, in Saudi because there's a chance that Cody gets booed. True. There's a chance that Sammy's so over. But then you're giving away Cody and Gunther for... Yeah, no. but you can Gunther do... Gunther wins, sh- presumably, as well. He beats Cody, yes. you would think. In but Saudi. I like that as a story. Like, Yeah, me too. Uh, it's yeah. not, you know, you know, I'm not going to be less interested for a future, let's say, WrestleMania match between... Cody and Gunther just, especially because you lean on it and say, you probably you could have shenanigans. Owens, you could have Owens injure Cody before the match. Exactly. Yeah. Or you can do sh- shenanigans with Ludwig Kaiser or, or whatever you want to do. Maybe even uh, have Kaiser versus Sammy on the same crown jewel card or whatever. I don't know, but I think I think it's set in stone. I, I don't know what I've the hell happens. I've gone from 100 with this Gunther-Sammy match to 99 and 1, basically. Yes. As, as oh, a I, result of the... That's, that's all I think Goldberg like. bought another ticket for Monday Night Raw. Well, because that would free up Gunther and Goldberg for, for Crown Jewel. And Goldberg well, if Stone would be... Cold gives uh, Goldberg a ticket and says, just don't do anything I wouldn't do. Right, yeah. That's good. That's good law. That's 20 years on law. Yeah. Right there, yeah. Bloody... Oh, my God. Well, Gunther and Goldberg is a very daft... that no way out, bollocks. Very daft Crown Jewel match, that, isn't it? Potentially. Goldberg yes. getting the money for that one rather than just doing a... Sammy's working Crown Jewel one way or another, isn't he? Yes, I would think so. So, I... This is what I mean. Like, it's... I think we're closer to it now as a result of that daft title versus title match than we were... Because I don't think... Like, Liv Morgan and Nia Jax doesn't Unless feel set in stone either. You say Bron's gone babyface. Yeah. Has he? Potentially not. This is what I mean. What if he costs Sammy in this match? Yeah, potentially not. Like, And he, then you have Bron versus Sammy in Saudi, and then after that, Bron's like, all right, I was being a bit of a dickhead. Mm-hmm. And the only reason I did that is because I wanted to face Gunther for the World Heavyweight Championship and not you, Sammy. Could Ludwig Kaiser tonight come out and run run interference for Gunther. Braun comes out as a baby face and spears Kaiser out of his shoes, deals with the problem, and then sees an opportunity, goes in the ring, goes to spear Gunther, and Gunther moves out the way. And, like, Braun just absolutely cleans through Sammy. Maybe. And that's what costs. Like, Sammy's got Gunther beat yet again, but it's that what costs him. I like that. Something like that. Like, yeah. Gunther could beat him clean, and I think it's a nice way to tie up their series at one and one and have, like, sat, right, Sammy, well, we've both beaten each other fair and square. There's a decider down the line that you can go to. That'll be cool as well. But there's a number of different options, as there always is, on WWE. Sammy gets uh, Sammy gets screwed out of it, and Postman Pierce is like, I'm really sorry, mate, but obviously I can't can't book any real matches. I can't book any more Raw for some reason that I'm, I can't think of right now. Uh, can't think of any. Can't think of any matches. Any other, uh, any other uh, t- uh, titles you uh, fancy fighting for? You know, if I could just give you a title shot in Saudi. Any other tag titles that you could, you know, get a mate in for? Uh, maybe do a tag match. Oh, a tag title match! And Sammy wins the tag titles with Jimmy against in Saudi against the Gorillas of Destiny against the Bloodline. Uh, well, no, I was going to say against. Oh, the Raw Belt against Street Trash. Street Trash. Yes, please. But yeah, I, th- I think Gunther leaves us as champion tonight, yeah. unfortunately. But Should be good, though. Can't it's going to be unbelievable. It was a hell of a high ball. That's main event, I assume. Uh, it has to be. I didn't like their main match half as much as everybody else in the world, apparently. Yeah, not as <laughs> much uh, as, as Michael Sidgwick. Uh, but I still think it's going to be excellent. Uh, circling back to more bad blood fallout, we have to talk about the Judgment Day, a.k.a. Street Dre-ish. Mm. You know, botched finish to the uh, to the women's title match. Obviously, with the uh, the good news being that Raquel Rodriguez is back. That's just great to see. Yeah. Um, as we talked a little bit about on the news today, hopefully she's now introduced as a the newest member of Street Trash, um, and we go from there. And I don't know what Rhea does next, actually. No, I don't know what anybody does out of this. I don't know if this is one of those situations where, to uh, to quote Limmy, off uh, the the two bad blood matches, don't back down double down mm. and you pretend like both those matches were rip roaring successes and you carry on with this story or you kind of back away from it and just say right have street trash come out and just say business concluded like we proved beyond a shadow of a doubt that we're done with these even like Finn Balor is just lying to your face he's like and anyway I'm more interested in being the tag champion eh, like that and it's mm-hmm. like completely tries to like brush off the fact that he got his ass handed to him by the guy that he always saw as like second term in the judgment day Pleasantly surprised by that match, by the way. Uh, I'm one of us was. And uh, 
Yeah, uh, look. It's gonna be a, it's gonna be a tale of two feds in that podcast. Yeah, like yeah. Uh, I think you got the best and the worst of it on that show. Um, Mostly the best. The Terror Twins did not have a good night for me, and I don't know if the best thing to do now is to just create the narrative excuse for them not being able to interact with the Judgment Day Street Trash for a while and just test the waters. I like. I have no worries anymore that Damian Priest can't enter into something new on Raw and it'd be over and it'd be good. Like his baby face run, this is not 2020, 2002 to 2021. He's not going to have this match and then they're going to be like, oh, I ain't got anything for you. Tough titty said mm. the kitty and he just pails into the back, right? There will be something lined up for him. This will have been thought through what his next move is, but it, I don't, this is the first time in a long, long time that I've not really wanted Judgment Day, Civil War or Rear and Damien versus the crew. I think, we, we saw the limits that tested at the yeah. daily. Do they lean into that? I'm just, just coming off the top of my head now. Do they lean into that and say, Terror Twins say, look, we can't keep doing this dance, right? Give us one more match. Mm. Whether it, a tag match feels like the best because I love that team of... Uh, kind of, of they kind of top the Berlin. Damien one, and Rhea. That, it's looking but, like that was the peak of all of this. But you do that. You say, give us one more match, right? And you can even add the stipulation of like... If we, with Terror Twins win, yeah. Rhea gets one more shot at Liv, uh-huh. right? But if you guys win, with all your shenanigans and what have you, um, then we have to leave Raw. Oh, yeah, yeah, I like that. Because or you could at least do Rhea can't compete for the title again while Liv's champion, which they've held yeah. firm with those sticks in the past. And it frees, like, Rhea and Dom, it's still a match you might one day want to get to. And it... All of it feels a bit cold. I don't mind that as a way to kind of draw a line under it and really... Ha- like, the problem is with the Terror Twins is that they were and still are supremely over as baby faces. And I sensed... And I sensed it during the show itself. Like, maybe fans are starting to tire of them only interacting with the Judgment Day. I think it's time to stress test how over these can be as baby faces against brand new people. Rhea and Raquel is obviously something you're going to get to. And like, why would you not? They had a kind of underrated yeah. NXT match in yeah. like a pretty grim era for that show. Mm. Remember that? They just beat the piss out of each other. So that's got something to it. My tag match pitch, by the way, was Finn and Liv versus the yeah. Terror Twins. Mm-hmm. But you could, in theory, make it a trios match and chuck Jey Uso into there because everyone was calling for Jay in the midst of the shenanigans on Saturday. And I think that might be a way to go as well. Like having Jay become an ally of those two and then become an ally of him. It only takes one believable. So you've got like the match we're going to get to in a minute, but it only takes one week where Jay Uso is fighting somebody. And now that it's been established that Damien and Rhea will help him all of a sudden, then our rivals of the people they're attacking to save him or something. You know what I mean? Like I really like the, uh, they've done it a lot as well. They've done it a couple of times. It feels like the, Diesel storyline with Raquel of just like, yeah. well, she kills everyone for the champion, but actually, maybe she wants the championship. It is. I'm just, I'm genuinely just really happy for her because it's one of those things where an injury is one thing. You go, oh, broke my leg or whatever. That sucks. I'm out for X amount of time. But what was the, I've, I've written it down actually. Mass activation. I don't want to butcher this. Mass, mast cell activation syndrome which he fought through, let's not forget, it, Elimination Chamber. Times, yeah. And then in March, they just went, look, you're going to have to just take some time off. Yeah. I really like Raquel. Really, really do. And I'm just happy to see her back wrestling again. Same. I, I think she should, like, ruin people for a bit. She should be the, like, you've got all these goons. Mm. You've got your JD McDonough hopping up on the apron and Dominic Mysterio being a little weasel and stuff like that. Raquel should be like, oh, no, no. If she gets her hands on you, she's she can stand toe-to-toe with someone like Rhea Ripley. Well, assuming that this has been in the works for a little while, and they've had this idea in the, in the background for a bit, last week, was it, or the week before? Um, and I can't claim that, like, we noticed this in a podcast, but it was something that, like, people on Twitter got very excited about, and then you can start maybe looking for clues. There was this self-contained street trash story where J.D. McDonough was sort of pieing mm. Dom in the face of Finn Balor. Now, whether or not that's, like, him acting under Finn's instruction, or he's kind of sick of Dom and uh, Liv's drama and the trouble that brings to Street Trash. Could it end up being that now, like, he forms a little bit of an... He really likes Raquel Rodriguez, and he's kind of glad that they've got this, like, proper ass kicker in the group rather than, like, kind of having to bail Liv and Dom out all the time. 
is that, uh, I don't know if you know this, Triple H quite enjoys uh, intrafaction tension. <laughs> Could that be the start of that? Could they be working towards, like, Liv and Dom being a breakaway act from Street Trash in the same way that Rhea and Damien were? And you've got JD McDonough and Raquel Rodriguez as, like, the next, you know, just like a, yeah. a never-ending sort of production line of street trash couples that just one after another after another get over and then become popular. And then, like, you'll see something, like, a little interaction between them where they, they've got, like, their own inside joke. And Liv's like, come on, Raquel, we're ready. We're going to go. And she's like, yeah, anyway, got to go. And you, already there's, like, a bond building in the background. Or Dom starts eyeing up Raquel instead. Yeah, because he's such a... Piece of trash. He likes muscle mammies. Carly, <laughs> Carly was just watching to see where the wind's blowing, so we make sure that he sticks with whoever <laughs> yeah. is going to like keep him in a job. The alternative is, of course, is uh, they use the because I know the the botch finish was meant to be live winning, mm. but they use that to be like Rhea one more match sort of thing, and she wins. And then you think about that, Liv Morgan and Raquel Rodriguez as a tag team, and who's the tag team champions right now? Yeah, it's a big match. Raquel and Jade, someone finally being on Jade's level of like, yeah, well, in stars, oh my god, just like lives mega over in this role, mm-hmm. some massive stars. Um, it's, it's, it's the beauty of it all. I'm, I'm, I'm fascinated to see where it goes, despite the fact, like you say, I'm kind of done with Damien and Rhea and Judgment S- Day and something to consider when the finish for Gunther and Randy Orton was blown slash badly performed they got a Berlin PLE main event out of it. The least they'll probably do is get next week on Raw, one last chance for Rhea Ripley. Mm. I did, you didn't pin me. So, like, somehow they'll work their way, and it's the main event of a two-hour All run. of Judgment Day and it's Shark Cage this time. Four Shark Cages. <laughs> shark Cages on Shark Cages, right? Like, but one more we match. We got one Shark Cage. <laughs> we got two Shark Cages. They're going to sell a figure set called Cage Mania, and it's just like, there's just <laughs> loads of cages, loads of wrestlers. Um... Ah, you do one more. It's a raw main event. Legitimately. Sharknado tag. I don't know. How does that work? <laughs> I just got the phrase Sharknado from the films and then thought of Tornado tag. Sharks in a weather condition. Yeah. The sharks as cages, there's wrestlers. What's going to happen? Oh, my. Yeah, sharks and cages and wrestlers. Oh, my. Main event of a two-hour raw. So we've got, like, I don't even... So, like, but it's a whirlwind, right? And the, the, the trick... What if the ring can rotate? <laughs> I know somebody who had that idea in the past. Ever. Can you imagine if the, the ring spun around? I don't know what happens after that. I think <laughs> probably people fall over and get dizzy, but I'm kind of dizzy. All What's day. the finish, Jeff? What's the finish, mate? You kind of spin around and be sick. Huh? <laughs> hey, she's got a history of being sick, uh, Rhea Ripley. Do you want to remind the people of that? Who's, who is it she worked with, actually? I can't remember who that was who was sick uh, in her next team. It's, I, I don't, if I could I remember just, the person's name. Time I shoot quickly. <laughs> <laughs> I think... Off the top of my head, and this is really improvising, I would say it was probably Robert Stone. Uh, I'll drop my coffee. Oh, you're all right. You're all yeah, right, good. Yeah. Um, it's Velcro. I didn't realize they were Velcro. Thank you for picking up my coffee. I appreciate you're the one. That's why this made sense. Uh-huh. Um, what were we talking about? Uh, street trade. Oh, and a, a whirling dervish of sharks and street trade. Yeah, so basically, the hurricane blows into the ring. And it's mm-hmm. like a, a cartoon Not the of a twister. No, no, just a cartoon of a twister. And street trash get caught up in it. They're like, oh, no, we're getting blown around by a bloody twister. And then one of them looks over, oh, shark's in it. And then <laughs> it's the shark. Shark boy, get him over from TNA. From That's TNA, a crossover. Doing a Steve Austin impression. So the glass smash hits, and it's Stone Cold Steve Austin, and he comes out. Everybody gets stunned, and uh, uh, Liv Morgan returns the title. And that, that's, that's how it's done, ladies and gentlemen. And that's raw. So. <laughs> what, are you, what are you shaking your head at, Nicholas? Oh, something Okay. <laughs> Okay, yeah. fair enough. Uh, we also have a good old-fashioned Donnybrook match. I didn't do the accent. Uh, Sheamus versus Pete Dunn. Yep. I mean, these two beat the granny out of each other all the time, but now they can use out, basically. Yeah. Uh, wrap this here, because I don't think it's worked. The, the program has existed to try and get fans to chant Butch in what is basically a redo of, like, when I was a kid which was a long time ago. We're all in our 30s, We're in our 30s. But when, like, 
IRS hated his own first name. So you would chant Irwin and it would really bloody wind him up. And he was warming up enough because we hadn't paid our taxes. So that was like, <laughs> it was the easiest heat. He would he would rock up and he was like, you know the worst thing about this town? You don't pay your taxes. And as a kid, you're booing. And in the UK as an adult, you're like, actually, no, I'm kind of with IRS because it funds the NHS and the roads and bins and things like that. Yeah, so yeah, like, yeah. Fair taxation is the best way to run into a democratic society. You've got a point, Irwin. But in America, it was very much like, I hate this tax asshole, Irwin. <laughs> So that's what they try to do with Butch. It's not really taken. No. Nor is it taken when it's like, you know, Butch sounds like <laughs> bitch. And it was like, well, actually, that was when Peter was the best was when he was a dog. Yeah. So that doesn't work either. But they're going to, to use your terminology, beat the granny out of each other tonight with a series of weapons. Shillelaghs, uh, British wrestlers love cricket bats, apparently, mm-hmm. then, uh, like overdose on cricket bats. I, I say don't use a cricket bat. I say use the stump. Sharp bit of the stump that you stab okay. in the grass. So like goes for the eye with the stump, Tully Blanchard and Magnum TA style. That's a Donnybrook. Uh, <laughs> what else can they use? What, uh, a, a granny. granny. Stunt granny. Stunt granny. She's a stunt granny. And then the granny could be like, oh, no, this granny's in real... Oh, that granny's a hell of a bumper. What's going on? The granny takes off the face. It's Trent Seven. <laughs> uh, that could be a, a thing. Yeah. Um, mm? Granny. Granny. <laughs> uh, what else they got? James could smash a pint of Guinness over his head. Mm-hmm. Whatever. Like a tit or whatever. <laughs> uh, not the grannies. Um, I suppose if it's two consenting adults. Um, themed weapons. What weapons? What are Birmingham themed weapons? Uh, uh, giant bar of cabris from Bournemouth. Okay, yeah. The huge Christmas ones you yeah, get. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that knack. Mm-hmm. And then when it breaks sometimes, in that jagged way, you can cut people with it, slice them up with a jagged bit. Have you seen that thing online? Where, like, Probably not. You have. So, ooh, there's a big bar of chocolate, and then you take one square out. It's a load of bollocks. No, I know it's I know it's math and trig and calc. I'm not like... Yeah, yeah, but is it the one where they remove it around and you've got an extra piece of chocolate? Is it, have they gimmicked it? It doesn't Yeah, work. they just hide a piece of extra chocolate in their hand, and they go, where's this piece come from? You've hidden it. I see it. It's no, weird. man. They've done, a, like, a proper mass magician on this. It's just a math thing. It's just a shape thing. Like, you can cut, you can take the square off in such a way that the angles work out. It's all about where you break the bar. It's not just I, mean, a, I don't understand why you're not just, just eating it, to be perfectly honest. You and I are just baffled by that so far. It's to entertain children that are thinking, like, look. I'm hungry. <laughs> I can't believe, hey, we're, hey, go, I can't believe we're on this side of the divide. He's going to get rid of one of the squares. Um, and speaking of which, um, 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 there they go. Wait a minute. Have we finally found the one issue in life where I'm in favour of keeping children entertained and you're in favour of just eating food as quick yeah. as possible? yeah. We switch lights. Look at this. Look at this, kids. A beautiful uh, bar of dairy milk. But if I wave my hand over it and put this cloth over it, no, where's the chocolate bar gone? It's not the trick. And turn around. Turn around. Oh, it disappeared. It's not the trick. <laughs> You're like Alan Partridge when they turn the light on. Been eating some moose. Um, <laughs> no, there's like some science to it. People will know what I'm talking about if they've seen the video. You've got a bar of chocolate, you cut it diagonally rather than oh, yeah. the squares off, and it leaves one square That's freeze. weird anyway, first of all. So, what are you doing? I mean, that, It's that, designed to be broken up. Yeah, that, there is a version of that that is similar to the people that eat the four-finger Kit Kats like a generic chocolate bar. Animals. I mean, that is... Just put them on a list at that point. Yeah. Maybe Pete Dunne does that to wind up Seamus. <laughs> what are you doing? Oh, <laughs> right in front of him. It's like people who bite into ice cream to me, that. Can't do it, I can't handle it. Bite, what, like a... You've got an ice cream... Uh, no, I know the, <laughs> I know what the words bite into an ice cream mean in a sentence. <laughs> I, I was going to ask. <laughs> sorry, that's really made me laugh. Oh, bite into an ice cream. I thought you meant bite into an ice cream. Uh, like, well, a magnum? you got yeah, to suck freak. it for ages yeah. first. You can bite mine, a chocolate. Mine, mine, ch- mine uh, how you eat a magnum before you take the first bite. Okay. That's me just cracking the top so I can snap off the little bits of chocolate. I eat all the chocolate on the outside first. Cause you got, so you've got to make a break, haven't you? If it's like a... Yeah. That's what I was doing. And then I just <laughs> use the tongue to work work my way down. <laughs> so you want, hang on. So you're taking the chocolate off, or are you, are you penetrating the ice cream with the gap that you've created? Often when you crack, it's, it's the structural integrity is going. That's that what point. I'm going to say. You're not going to try and, are you going to try and keep the entire chocolate together on a magnum? No, no, no. I eat, I eat all the chocolate, and then the, the ice cream is completely intact. Peel it away with your and teeth, then just, and then you've just got a perfect. And then it's just... Mm, yeah, but you don't bite it, obviously, because no. you're a monster if you do that. What about um, uh, Cornettos? Yeah, same. Just uh, slowly work. Lick it. Eat the bits of chocolate off the top. Lick it. <laughs> it's like the SmackDown preview. This isn't it? Oh, they've descended into talking about food again. <laughs> Bite the little bits of chocolate off mm-hmm. top. Then work, work, work with the ice cream to get it down to the cone. Eat the cone. Work the, work the way down with the ice cream. 
like uh, feast. Yeah, yeah. Eat the edge. Fe- of- you gotta bite a feast. No, eat the outside of a feast. Yeah, how? Uh, you can't just gum it off. You just cr- crack it. Structural integrity again. Eat that. Eat the crinkly bit on the outside by sucking it. No, 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 no. Licking you, crack, it. you crack it with your teeth. With your teeth. Yeah, but you're not biting it all the way off. Not biting all the way through. My teeth and teeth are not getting cold at any point. A feast is there. It's in the clues in the name, man. It's a feast. No, and then you eat the, uh, the chocolate ice cream, and then you Henry, eat a solid that. piece of chocolate for afterwards. I like the solid piece of chocolate in the dog. You know what I love? I t- there is something to the solid piece of chocolate in the feast. It's gotten smaller. I don't like that. Yeah, yeah. Solid piece of chocolate in the feast, and the bottom of a cornetto. Yeah, that little chocolate nipple at the bottom of a cornetto. That's, that's why you can never buy knockoff cornettos for me because oh. there's the danger. You get all the way to the end there. What's this? Just more cone. There's nothing at the bottom. The so they cut the their corners. That's how they've they've made their money back. Cut the points, if anything. Uh, as the ones have the chocolate in, you oh, get four goodness. in a box, and Cornettos you tend to only get three, and they're twice the price. So get the as the ones. Okay. Don't get the strawberries. They are a crushing disappointment. I wouldn't never, pick them never. anyway. Yeah. I'm a chocolate or a mint. vanilla. I don't mind mint chocolate chip, but I think they use as much chocolate as you can possibly get on a Cornetto for me. None mm. of the you know when they do the fabulous creations, and it's like. You know, I'm a sucker for, like, neon food. <laughs> I won't be fooled by neon ice cream. Okay. So just to clarify, Seamus or Donny, uh, um, Pete Dunne? I'm going to go with Donny O'Brook. Uh, no. Uh, Seamus, Pete Dunne can go away for a bit. Yeah, but he never does. I'll go Pete Dunne. Okay. I think Seamus wins. I don't... Are they going to queue Seamus up for a shot of Gunther? Well, that's what I was thinking. Just to, just to do it. Saturday night's main event, whatever. Like... Mm. <laughs> Really hard. He's trying to get people. We're trying to get Gunther to the Rumble against Punk, basically, right? I don't know. I, I, it, there's just too many wrestlers. I'm too excited. It's just it's like it's a it's a buffet, and I, as usual at a buffet, just want everything on multiple plates. Well, I'm booking The Rock to win the Rumble, so yeah. I think if you have Punk beat Gunther, mm-hmm. and Cody obviously is still champion at that point, I like the idea of The Rock deciding between the two. Oh my. God. And whoever's NXT champion, I'm probably, probably, probably turning D'Angelo by that point. And he picks Tony. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to work standing. Go with, that. yeah. I'm going to use my uh, world, world Championship match with Cody Punk. And there, here we go. Here's the rock going for Tony D. <laughs> and then he's like, twist. Uh, standing delivers happening at the sphere. So, uh, oh my God. Still time. And it's title for title. Tony's world title versus the People's Championship, which is definitely a real belt. <laughs> I love him so much. He's the best. I like that belt now. Uh, that's. Maybe one Nicholas. of these. Mm, no. It's gone quiet. It's one of the stupidest things I've ever seen at WrestleMania. Even Al Louis said, what's that belt he's wearing? Now he's just like, now it's a part of his aesthetic. Said, so, you know Muhammad Ali? Well, let me tell you. Let me tell you a lie he told about his widow. Uh, I, I, it's, I love it now. That it just exists all the time. Like, is that, imagine if he turned, oh God, I forgot the People's Championship. Rocket doesn't matter. Yes, it does. Cancel the show. Like, get me a flight now. <laughs> Moving on, uh, as I mentioned, Seth Rollins is back. Do they uh, expedite that for uh, for Saudi? The uh, big match with Bronson Reed. Yes, I think so. Um, Bronson Reed has obviously had this wonderful thing with mm. Braun Strowman, so much so that you almost forget that it was the night he decked Seth. That yeah, started all of this because the stuff with Braun Strowman has just been so electrifying. So. You know, odds are good that they'll at the very least get to the PLE and keep this mm-hmm. Bronson Reed hype train going. But is the smart thing to do here have, like, or attempt at least to recreate that first beatdown? Because Seth Rollins came out last week and instantly, instantly uh, makes it clear, what, like, where everybody stands in the pecking order. Bronson Reed took him out, injured him. It was a really incredible, I'm going to get one on you, mate, and that's how I'm going to get over. But in Seth's first act... He kills him with his finisher and costs him a big match. Yeah. So in order to keep... Like, I love this Bronson Reed run, but I think we can all agree the momentum is fragile. Yes. And at any given moment, like, it feels like kind of they're walking a tightrope with it and that he could just stumble off. Does Seth have to get it again? <laughs> like, does he have to sort of... He's come back uber confident, uber excited. I'm back. I kicked your ass. Like, <laughs> dealt with all that. And then just at some point, he eats a lot of <laughs> for like, mm. for just daring to think that this was going to be easy. This Bronson Reed thing was going to be just something for him to do. Do you even, is it that bold to say that Bronson Reed beats him? Okay. Because it is getting a rumble season. Seth will be in the conversation for one of the big matches, possibly headlining night one with CM Punk. 
possibly getting back in the title picture. Things are going to be fine for Seth Rollins. Is this the right time to just go all in on Bronson Reed? Yeah. I don't, I don't know. I'm like, I'm asking that question because I I don't think I know the answer. I just think it's a delicate balance keeping Bronson Reed as over as he's been. So I'm just looking now whilst you were talking. Obviously, there's only two matches confirmed right now for, for Crown Jewel, mm-hmm. um, which is the two champion versus champion matches yeah. for the weird belts that they've made. Um, yeah, I, I feel like that goes on the show um, because it just makes sense. But I like the idea of, yeah, Bronson Reed not just being immediately, oh, well, he did that and he, you know, squashed some people for a few weeks. Yeah. Plus, I feel like just looking forward, Seth and Bronson Reed could be a, a match that could actually, I, we say it every year and it never happens, actually makes use of the fact that they've got not just one ring, but two rings <laughs> at Survivor Series. Yeah, don't hate that. So you could have Bronson Reed, I don't know, pounce him into the second ring or whatever you want. Yeah, he's uh, stood, like, ready to do the tsunami and Seth rolls what he thinks is out of the ring in on instinct, but he inadvertently rolls into the other ring. Yeah, and then and he just Reed does the rope walk and... along the top rope into a tsunami. Yes, definitely. definitely. That's definitely. That's and to be honest, considering what Bronson Reed's done recently, I don't think I could actually book something that's physically impossible for him. Tsunami off the top of the War Games cage when he's in, like, just lower it. I want to do this. No, it's... I, I don't know what they... I really just want a bit where him and Punk cross paths. Seth and Punk? Yeah. Yeah, at the point at which they're back in the same building again. It's exhilarating isn't it big time isn't it it's massive it's it's so like the again it's just one of the many things many 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 people were wrong about when it came to the SummerSlam match was that the Seth Rollins interaction was obviously not going to be for tomorrow it was going to be for like potentially a Wrestlemania but certainly I don't want to understate it by a rainy day but they were planting something for something huge down the line um and it didn't matter that it was like Punk's distraction was the bracelet it was the idea that like Ultimately, what he was distracted by was the hatred for Seth Rollins that mm. was gradually consuming him as that match wore on. And Seth's just open disdain for Punk is quite a nice, natural continuation of the Drew McIntyre thing. Yeah, I'm not saying you tell the same story again. No. But it's very much like, well, Drew McIntyre starts all this by kind of being quite trivial about how the locker room hates you. Well, somebody that is going to fight that fight even louder and even angrier is company man, top baby face, Seth Rollins. Plus, really funny if he's the workhorse of the Rumble and does like 10 eliminations and then Rock comes out last and just chucks him out. Thanks for coming, pal. I mean, th- nobody gets that Muggs game rolled be- over better than Seth yeah. Rollins. I don't know how he does it. He's a he's kind of a wizard in that regard. So, I um, Punk and Rollins, whenever they get back to it, is going to... Their promo face-off earlier this year was... Like, their face-to-face... It was, the only reason people aren't talking about that in promo of the year category is Punk had already had it with their Cody Rhodes. Yeah. Like, that face-off they had... Or was it, um, maybe it was because it was December instead of January. Oh, yeah. But, like, either way, go back and watch it. Like, they are selling you a massive, massive match from that first promo, and they know, and everything's pending how well Punk does and yeah. how well things go backstage and all that sort of stuff. You have to put them caveats in. It's just money, isn't it? Mm. Uh, finally, interna- international? No, intercontinental championship. Like a Ridge Holland Yorkshire voice there. <laughs> Inter main event. The Intercontinental Championship is also on the line tonight. Uh, the new champion, Jey Uso, defending against Xavier Woods. Could he cheat to win the title tonight? Cheat. To oh. Um, maybe. This is really fascinating stuff. The amount of people who've messaged me saying, I just love this New Day story. It's hard to visualize uh, Jey Uso losing the title so soon after winning it, unless you incorporate a pissed off and out for vengeance bloodline, mm-hmm. having lost a bad blood. So there's your first way in. Xavier Woods has already said wh- last week, well, a win's a win. Yeah. Xavier Woods has shown that he will take a win however it comes. The idea that there's a win, but it's so pyrrhic that Kofi, even when celebrating oh, with him, God. has kind of got that look in his eyes where it's like, Look how far back we go with the Usos. Remember Kofi Mania. Remember what they did for me when you were in that gauntlet. Like, the Usos are brothers to us, not just to each other. And that was how you were prepared to win against. And like, Xavier Woods, well, of course you would do this. What happened when you won the world title? What happened when he won the world title? I was there. I couldn't have been more excited for you. I couldn't have been happy. And I finally get it. I finally get my own. And you can't even lift me up. Like, and I went to all this trouble of getting E to Raw for our 10th anniversary celebration a couple of weeks. <gasps> and then, it, and you don't even... What, like, all of that, if it plays out as such, is 
as heartbreaking as it is gripping and suspenseful and awesome. And I just can't quite see them giving it the woods now. No, not yet. I, like, I think there's going to be amazing teasers in this match, whether yeah. it's a ref bump, Aye. whether it's... Uh, maybe it's just as simple as Jay wins, but actually Xavier had his foot on the ropes or whatever. Or Jay so loses his title and the like it's not so much woods bragging about it but various heels loudly proclaim jay Uso like a choke artist a guy that like yeah you won the big one but like keeping it's hard and winning it in the first place and like oh your big quest was over being a champion where you didn't really look much like one did you and jay Uso being at like quite an emotionally low ebb and then him getting the call from jimmy and finally agreeing to take the call and jimmy saying look I, uh, I think I know where there's maybe a place for you. I think I know where maybe we can... You know what might pick you back up? Family. And Jay's like, I can't, I, I can't, I can't go through this all again. And Jimmy's like, no, it's different this time. It's different this time. Like, look, Roman, like, I called the play and Roman accepted it and went with me. Things are going to be different. And Jay's like, I'm going to need proof. And it's going to be in the form of one word and Roman's going to have to say it. Mm. Uh, whatever. Like, you can do that with Jay having lost his title that he worked so hard to win. I just don't think they'll do it. I, do, like, I have a feeling they'll go with Jay and you do the woods falling short and blaming other people and Kofi. I think he's going to have a, a justification for it, whether it be a visual win, yeah, whatever. Does Kofi, in a, like he got in this match as well, by the way. Yes. Let's not forget that. In an effort to pick up Xavier Woods, say next week or the week after, does he reveal that he's managed to fight for and claim a tag title shot on the night of... The New Day's time. I feel sick. Like, is that, you know, we keep talking about Big E, and maybe he is back for it. Presumably, he's in the works. But do they have a tag title match on the night of the 10th anniversary? And it's kind of like all or nothing. You either have that raw where the New Day celebrate the 10th anniversary by becoming tag champions again. Big E at ringside. Woods, just like, this is this is home. This is what it's all about, about being in the New Day. Or New Day's aid, where they lose. Xavier Woods goes nuts, tries to re-break Big E's neck. Uh, like, slams yeah. it in a car door or something like that. Beats up Kofi Kings and properly storms off. The tension, that's main event stuff, isn't it? Yeah. That's that whole scene, win, lose, or draw, is the main event segment of Raw. And what Splice that with footage from over the years. Of yeah. Them. What more fit in a way to sort of have a Raw be headlined? It's like 10 years later... Tag teams can't last five, like, ten minutes, let alone ten years in WWE, and now we're giving them the main event. What if they do that with all the footage of the New Day, you know, winning the tag titles, all that, Kofi winning at Mania, Big E cashing into winning the title, and they just don't include the King of the Ring victory for Xavier Woods, and he's like, what's all that about? Eh? Oh, I don't get single stuff, but you two do, is it? We got this video made, and there's loads of bits of Woods, like, Francesco with the title, like, there's so Oh, much. I'm just the trombone guy, am I? Yeah. Oh, this is already brilliant. This is all have, the tag wins, yeah. Just whenever it was Big E and Kofi. This is so nice, right? Because we talk about twenty years of mostly trash from WWE, and it mostly was. Uh, the New Day are a miracle. The New Day are a desert rose. In the twenty fourteen to twenty twenty four, they have remained together. They have remained loyal to each other. They have remained over, crucially, even during the worst of Vince McMahon's booking excesses. Even following the Brock Lesnar lost her. Um, at the Brock Lesnar victory over Kofi Kingston, the fact that Big E could have been received as a heel the way that he won the title. Mm. Half of the milestones are the sort of stuff that would have ruined anyone else's career. And yet, just a, just a force of goodwill towards the New Day is unlike almost everything else you've ever seen in WWE. And to be able to benefit from that now, when the company creatively is functioning as well as it is, is like the, le like the least of the rewards they deserve mm. for this act being as magical as they have been. But let's not forget the man behind all the corruption within the New Day, and that would be Karrion Cross. And that reminds me, it's now time for the... The raw riddle makes me want to tell it to f*** off! <laughs> Usual things here then. I am going to hit you with a riddle to test your noggin. Uh, and we will reveal the answer to this tomorrow when Michael Sidgwick will be back. Um, Sidgwick is better than me at some of these of late. Some of the real more obscure ones, he's picked them up straight away. Mm. Left well, them. today's riddle. Forward, I am heavy, but backward, I am not. What am I? That's forward, I am heavy, but backward, I am not. What am I? I mean, I've got tits and a flat ass, so is it me? 
<laughs> this week's Raw Riddle. <laughs> but before we go, a little bit of fun we promised earlier on today. If CM Punk isn't just... <laughs> just again, just again. Okay. Game with the game. Um, if CM Punk isn't, I don't know, setting his sights on the World Heavyweight Championship or yep. getting into it with Seth Rollins or just not appearing on the show, maybe, given what happened with uh, Gunther uh, at Bad Blood, yep. Punk decides to, to face a legend. Well, who could that be? It's time to play the game! Time to play time the game! game. Which legend does CM Punk fancy given the biggest quarter hour of the year to? <laughs> so I have the WWE alumni page open in front of me. Uh, mm. Use your rules. Pro Evo rules apply. When you're ready, tell me to stop. Give me a number. And uh, we will say that is CM Punk faces on tonight's two-hour rule that's already <laughs> packed. <laughs> Unannounced. Stop. Uh, pick a number between one and 12. That was a lot. Eight. No. Uh, <laughs> right, nine. Oh, I've moved on now. Hang okay, on. Okay, right. Stop. Uh, okay. One. Well, you had uh, you had Goldberg, of course. Busy at uh, Bad Blood. He's busy, but mm -hmm. Gilberg's right there. <laughs> I mean, that's a good bit. That is a funny bit. Well, twist, but it's a good bit. Yeah, it's good stuff. That uh, it's good stuff. <laughs> it's money. It's money stuff. Punk would find a way to make money. Yeah. Right? Stop. Uh, yeah, picking on between uh, one and twelve. You know, remember when Gilbert got the, the Goldberg tattoo was like the tribal pattern and they had like a scissors cut in the line one. Imagine like having like a really scabby kind of coke in the place of the Pepsi <laughs> one. Uh, four. No. Uh, I'm scrolling again. <laughs> Stop. It's a, it's a, it's a real yeah, minefield, this. It is. One. Shane Douglas. Oh, yeah! <laughs> <laughs> You're kidding me. I thought you'd like that. Drew being allowed to uh, drop F-bombs on the Twitter video. Give Shane Douglas one on Raw. Have him come out, right, in his Dean Douglas gear. Okay. In which he was buried by the click. And he said, Sean and Hunter are going to be made of this f***ing shit anymore. And, like, Punk can talk about how he like, had that iconic feud with Raven. Yeah. Shane Douglas, I know a bit about Raven. And uh, then Punk's going to drop in. that He knows. He always goes to that line. He gets a little twinkle in his eyes. Like, I know it's going to send off the edge. Don't worry about fighting him in the ring. Get inside their head. Of course, I'm a, I'm a big fan of the nature boy, Ric Flair. And Douglas is like, yeah, want me to kill him. <laughs> we'll twist to everybody else, but I'm sticking on Shane Douglas, give okay. him a choice. Just for, just for fun. Because uh, now we have to have who we're left with, right? Exactly. You're stuck CM with... CM Punk get franchised so much. Uh, right, twist, yeah, second best choice. Look at it or whatever. Okay. Time to stop. Stop. Okay. Oh, boy. Uh, one to 12. Two. No. Nope. Three. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Can't believe we booked this and it's definitely happening. Just, just check what this person's up to right now. Oh, God. <laughs> Postman Pierce. Yeah, Going to yeah. put a tweet out about this match later on. Uh, okay, he's... Uh, <laughs> You're not really worried. <laughs> no, no, he's, this is fine. Okay. It'd be just... Get a good match out of anyone, can he? Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Because mm -hmm. uh, he's got Vladimir Kozlov <laughs> tonight. <laughs> That's fitting, because I was watching that Hell in a Cell match, and I was like, I love Double Double E. So, like, <laughs> maybe Vladimir Kozlov was too. And now he's like, that's brought the love back. And I've been letting, we're having this, I've been letting to WWE. Why? Because who's opened the door? Somebody I know well in TNA, Santino Morella. Of course. And his daughter, the liaison between the two sides, Ariana Grace, mm -hmm. she's got him in, and Punk's like, well, that's interesting. I've worked with the Ariana Grace because I'm down in NXT quite a lot, mm -hmm. and he's like, I know, I've been watching you from afar. It's like, you think I would have noticed. Well, you didn't, and now we're going to go one-on-one -on -one at the Survivor Series. What? And Punk, and Punk is going to take it on as a challenge because he's like, well, that's interesting, Vladimir, because I saw you have a one-on-one -on -one match oh, at the Survivor Series. Jesus. It was with Triple H. It was the worst goddamn f***ing thing I've seen in my life. <laughs> and if there's one thing I know about CM Punk is that privately in the background, he knows he's a hundred times the rest of the game Triple H ever exactly. was. And he's going to prove it at this year's Survivor Survivor Series, tick, tick, motherfucking tick. There you have it. That's uh, that's the rope preview.
Let us know your thoughts ahead of Raw tonight on X at What Culture WWE or in the comment section. You can follow both of us as well. You can follow Michael Hamflet at Michael Hamflet. You can follow me at Adam Wilborn. You can follow our brilliant producer at It's Adam Nicholas. And make sure you subscribe to What Culture Wrestling wherever you get your podcasts from for daily wrestling podcasts. We're going to be reviewing AW Collision a little bit later on today. Don't worry about that though, because we'll also be reviewing uh, Bad Blood. <laughs> Live on YouTube as well this afternoon. But for now, this has been the Raw Preview. My thanks to Michael Hamlet. Thank you for joining us. And we will see you soon.